Hello students, in this video we'll define the Poisson kernel on the unit disk. The Poisson kernel on the unit disk, and for our context the unit disk is going to be the set of all points r and theta in polar coordinates such that r is between 0 and 1 and theta is between 0 and 2 pi, or negative pi and pi doesn't matter, so we can do 0 and 2 pi or negative pi less than or equal to theta, less than pi, like so. There's our unit disk, okay? Of course, classically, we know what the unit disk looks like, right? Just the interior of the unit circle, right? So here's our unit disk. There's negative one, there's one, there's one. So there's our unit disk over here. I'm gonna define the Poisson kernel. What is it? So P R of theta is the sum over all integers, n and z, of r to the absolute value of n, e to the i n theta. So I define p r of theta by its Fourier series. So its Fourier series, what are the Fourier coefficients of the p r of theta? Well, it's clear from this thing over here that p r, so of course when, when n is equal to zero, this is just a one, right? So p hat of zero is equal to one, okay? That's good to know. That's one of the conditions of our approximation identity. And then p hat of n, it's just going to be r to the absolute value of n for n not equal to zero, right? So those are the Fourier coefficients of this thing. Of course, this is just two geometric progressions, right? So we can find an explicit formula for this Poisson kernel. But the other thing I want to mention is that if we look at the functions, for example, so just as a remark before we proceed, so remark, the remark is that the Laplacian in polar coordinates is urr plus 1 over r ur plus 1 over r squared u theta theta, which we proved in the previous video. And so in particular, if I look at the functions, if I plug in, if I look at my functions u of r and theta, it's just r to the power n e to the i and theta. What can we say about these things? Well, what will urr be? So urr, urr is going to be n times n minus 1 r to the n minus 2 e to the i n theta. ur is just going to be n r to the n minus 1. And then what? And then e to the i n theta. And what's the theta theta derivative? The theta theta derivative of u theta theta is just going to be what? It's going to be i n i n. That's going to be a negative n squared um, r to the n e to the i n theta, right? So if I look at these functions over here, so what's going to happen if I plug these in over here? So if I have a 1 over r u r, that's going to give me what? Notice that every one of these terms over here, this term over here, this term over here, and this term over here is what power of r? They all have the power of r n minus 2, n minus 2 because I have a 1 over r over here, and I have an r, r to the n over r squared. So all of these expressions over here have an r to the n minus 2 in them. So for this function over here, so if I do the Laplacian of this function u, I'm going to have an r to the n minus 2 common to all of them, right? They all have an e to the i and theta that can come out. e to the i and theta is common to all of them as well. And then what's left over over here? What's left over is going to be n times n minus 1. And then what? And then a plus n for this guy over here, so plus n. And then a minus n squared, right? Well, look, there's an n squared over here, a negative n squared over here. Those terms are going to cancel out. And there's a negative n and a positive n. Those are going to cancel out. So the Laplacian of this function are equal to 0. So in other words, the Poisson kernel is the sum, is an infinite sum, and every one of those functions is an infinite sum, is a harmonic function. Okay? So it's an it's a infinite sum of harmonic functions. Excellent. That's going to be important in further analysis when we're solving boundary value problems. Okay? So this is the Poisson kernel. So now let's write down a formula for this Poisson kernel. So how do I do that? Well, we can note, so that's important. So in other words, this remark says the Poisson kernel is the sum of harmonic functions. Okay, excellent. All right, so what's PR? So PR of theta, I'm gonna break into two terms, right? I'm gonna look at the sum from zero to infinity of R to the N. If R, if N is positive, I can drop the absolute value, e to the I and theta plus the sum from 1 to infinity, now I'm going to use the negative terms over here. So now, this is when n is negative, so I'm going to have to replace all the n's with negatives, right? So I'm going to have an r to the negative n, r to the n, still, right? Because the absolute value makes it positive, and then e to the minus i n theta, okay? This is great because I have two infinite geometric progressions. So this is a geometric progression over here. This is going to sum to 1 over 1 minus the common ratio, just r e to the i theta. 
plus this is a uh, geometric progression that starts at 1, so I have to put an r e to the minus i theta over 1 minus r e to the minus i theta. Okay. Let's get a common denominator. So this will be equal to what? So this is equal to 1 minus r e to the minus i theta, and then plus r e to the minus i theta times this quantity over here, 1 minus r e to the i theta, all divided by, let's do the multiplication out here. So I have a 1 times 1, that gives me a 1. Then I have a, the last terms are r, uh, negative r times negative r times e to the i theta, e to the negative i theta, e to the negative i theta, e to the negative i theta is cancel out, and you get r squared, so it's going to be an r squared. And then what are the middle terms? The middle terms each have an r, so they have a minus r, and then e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta plus r squared. Okay, excellent. Now look over here, this term over here is going to cancel out with this term over here, because one's going to be a positive r e to the negative i theta, there's a negative r e to the i theta. And now if I multiply r e to the negative i theta times this thing, I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a negative r squared, so I have a 1 minus r squared in the numerator. So what happens over here is I get a 1 minus r squared in the numerator over what? over 1 minus, now this is twice the cosine of theta, so you write 2r cosine theta plus r squared, and that is an expression for our Poisson kernel, pr of theta. This is a beautiful formula over here because what we're going to see in further videos is in fact this is an approximation to identity. These terms over here are clearly not negative, and as r goes to 1, I can see, I can bound this away. As r goes to 1, this is going to convert, as if I punch out a neighborhood of r equals 1, I can see that this is going to converge to a delta function as r goes to 1, right? So in other words, at 0, when theta is equal to 0 and r is going to 1, you're getting a delta function, so this will form an approximation to identity. We're going to use that to solve the Laplace equation on the interior of this region with a given boundary conditions, right? So that's the important property of this. The second thing is that if you actually plug this function into the Laplace number here, you're going to see that PR is in fact a harmonic function. So this Poisson kernel is going to play the role as an approximation identity in further boundary value problems. Thank you very much.